1962, from the quiet seaside town of Peel on the Isle of Man, came an invasion. Strange shapes started to appear, the likes of which had never been seen before. Looking like visitors from Mars, Trident microcars were spawned by a Peel boat building company. They were expert in moulding fibreglass and decided to produce an ultralight, ultra compact vehicle, a true bubble car. The Trident, with its distinctive plexiglass dome, was the brainchild of Peel Engineering's owner, Cyril Cannell. The idea was simply to build a car able to take another person as long as the two people weren't too large. <laughs> But with a lift up top, you can get out without having a door interfering with passing traffic. And also you can go in between, for parking, in between two other vehicles and get out without having to open doors. The two-seater Trident was the deluxe model. Peel Engineering had previously created an even smaller, simpler car. In fact, the smallest ever road-going vehicle. <laughs> At just under four and a half feet long, the P-50 could be tucked into the tiniest of parking spaces. The P-50 was the first car to be produced on the Isle of Man, and although a success on the mainland, it received a mixed reaction on the island. For a lot of people, particularly younger people, it was something completely different and quite unusual. And um, a lot of people used to stare, children used to shout, and dogs used to bark. Solicitor Neil Hansen is the proud owner of the only P-50 never to have left the island. To some local astonishment, he still drives it today. They were advertised as providing saloon car comfort. I think really it was aimed at people who had motorcycles and scooters. And uh, here was a similar kind of vehicle which they could drive with some protection from the weather. The car was almost entirely of fibreglass, so the bodywork. Uh, the engine was a DKW 50cc with quite a good power output, 4.2 brake horsepower. We drove the car very long distances just to make sure they were absolutely reliable and well tested. P-50s were safe enough on Manx roads, but needed to pass more rigorous tests to gain American approval. When the, we sent the first car over to uh, USA, it had to be passed by the Bureau of Transportation. The inspector <clears throat> took the P-50 out onto the highway and unfortunately rolled down an embankment. <laughs> but he escaped without a, a single scratch, so he passed it straight away. <laughs> P-50s and Tridents flourished during the 1960s. The great advantage of these little microcars was that they could be driven on a motorcycle licence. You could even drive them unaccompanied on L-plates while you were learning. This made them popular with courting couples, although the plastic dome on the Trident did tend to steam up. The Trident was probably more successful than the P-50, although a lot of people seemed to consider the P-50 was their ideal car. <laughs> I think probably I'd prefer the P-50, partly because it was the original Peel, and partly because it's more comfortable for me, I suppose, and um, partly also because it's rather more unusual. The Trident itself is unusual, but the Trident really looks, I suppose, like a miniature bubble car. The P-50 looks really like nothing else. I find them perfectly reliable on the short journeys for which I use them. I think the main problem about using them on today's roads is traffic, because you feel very exposed, very vulnerable. Um, you're very, very low compared with ordinary cars, let alone double-deck buses. And with a top speed of only 30 miles an hour, they were slow. But in their heyday in the 1960s, they were the culmination of the British dream to build the perfect microcar. The dream had started in the dreary years following the Second World War. Conventional cars were rare luxuries, and for many people, the unwieldy motorcycle and sidecar was the only means of transport, but they were far from dry or comfortable. 
So aeronautical designer Laurie Bond devised a way of using existing motorcycle technology while keeping the driver and passenger dry. Bond saw his mini car as the future of motoring. All Bond needed was a place to make the cars and he immediately thought of the Preston-based motor repair business run by Colonel Gray. He knew their contract with the Ministry of Supply was about to run out. We had a good trained workforce of 80, 90 men and one or two ladies. And uh, I was approached by Lawrence Bond to see if I would rent the factory to him. He'd obviously heard that our contract was going to expire and that he wanted to make a small three-wheeled car which he had designed and for, for which he'd built, in fact, by then a small prototype. And um, I said, no, I wouldn't let the factory to him, but I might make the cars for him. And uh, then he left it with me for a couple of days whilst I drove it over the hills and far away. I just felt that here was something which might appeal to the motorcyclist because he could drive it on his motorcycle license and um, he could get his wife inside and maybe a child at a pinch out of the, the bad weather. Colonel Gray took a gamble on a car aimed at weather-weary motorcycle users. The first ever British microcar, the Mark A Bond minicar, was exhibited at the 1949 motorcycle show. We had a sizable stand with three or four of these cars on it. And uh, to our absolute amazement, we were inundated with people. Dozens and dozens, in fact, hundreds of people. And there came the time when I had to send for reinforcements because my staff was so weary. Colonel Gray was swamped with orders and the car went into production, starting with around 15 vehicles a week. By the 1st of June 1950, they'd made a thousand cars. To celebrate the fact that we were producing our thousandth car that day, I laid on some barrels of beer to be put in the factory and at six o'clock invited everybody to come along and have a drink. And uh, I was very amused by one fellow who'd only joined us that day who sidled up to me with a tankard in his hand and said, this is a damn fine firm to work for. I think he expected that sort of treatment every day. <laughs> After the success of the Mark A, Colonel Gray developed the minicar design. 